Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about PLS predict in Smart PLS. In the previous videos, we, we have already discussed about how to do the, uh, do the reliability and validity testing in Smart PLS. We have also seen the approaches like uh, relative and formative construct, how to establish the conversion validity in formative scale. And we have also seen the uh, estimation of the structural equation modeling. After all this process is complete, the next step which you have to take in Smart PLS is PLS predict. Basically, it's an algorithm which has been developed by Smiley et al. in uh, 2016. So it's it's basically an algorithm to check that is not the uh, PLS overfitting the training model or not. So for this purpose, PLS predict has uh, two settings which we have to do. One is a number of folds and the second is the number of repetitions. Now, number of folds means uh, you must be having some data set and if I specify that 10, then the data set will be divided into the 10 equal parts. 9 will be kept as a training data set and 1 will be kept as a testing data set. Now, if I specify number of repetitions 10, then this process will be repeated 10 times to get the stable estimates. And after this, the errors will be generated. The errors will be generated for the linear model and the errors will be generated for the PLS model and both these errors will be compared. Uh, we expect that the errors in the PLS algorithms will be lesser than the, than in the, in the linear model. Then only we can go for the advanced algorithm like a PLS, uh, PLS algorithm. Now this is a diagrammatic representation how we are carrying out the cross validation and the iteration process. So basically here Fourfold cross validation is being done. Uh, this is one is a testing data set and another is a training data set and the iteration is repeated four times. So that way we go ahead. So how to carry out uh, this analysis in Smart PLS? So for this purpose, we will have to activate uh, the model, uh, activate the software that is Smart PLS. Let's activate it. We already have uh, drawn the model. So calculate PLS predict. You will have to go from here. Now see in the settings, you have to specify how many number of folds you want. Number of repetitions are 10. We have to specify that. Normally, the default settings are better and you should go for that only. After that, run it. Now it will generate MV prediction summary, LV prediction summary, MV predictions and error, LV predictions and error. Now what is MV? MV stands for manifest variable, LV stands for latent variable and LM stands for linear model. So you will have to see the errors of errors of endogenous variable and it will only generate the errors for endogenous variable. You can see this is a PLS, uh, PLS errors that is RMSE, MAE, MAP. RMAC is root mean square error, MA is mean absolute error, and MAP is mean absolute percentage error. Uh, most of the time, we don't rely on MAP because it is considered to be the biased measure, and therefore we rely on RMAC and, and only MA. You will have to compare the errors which have been generated of PLS with LM. Now, which to consider, RMAC or MA? It highly depends on uh, residuals are normally distributed or not. If residuals are normally distributed, you go for the first one. And if they are not normally distributed, do you go for the second one? But how we will come to know that the residuals are normally distributed or not? Or what are the uh, what are the things which we will consider on the basis of which we will take the decision that the errors is not normally distributed or not? So for this purpose, we will have to go in the graphical representation of the uh, graphical representation of the errors, which you can get it from here. Just click it and you will get error for all the four statements which we have loaded on staying intention construct. Now how to interpret this graph? For this purpose what I will do is I will take this graph on word file. Now just I will press from here copy to clipboard chart. Okay. I'll take the graph here. Now, when we are interpreting these residuals, we will have to see the zero line. 
zero line is basically our assumptions are there that the error should be normally distributed it means mean should be at the zero so you can see that this is a mean zero and we expect that the error should have a bell shaped curve but here there is a high degree of skewness which is found in the errors similarly this is for si1 you can also do it for si2 you can also do it uh, you can check it for si2 it's also skewed si3 it's also skewed and si uh, si4 same scenario so we cannot rely here on we cannot rely here on rmsc and for this purpose we have to do the interpretation according to the mean absolute error we will have to go according to that only but how we will do this so for this purpose we will copy this table of both the algorithm that is pls and L, lm on excel and there we will compare so please open the excel And first of all, activate PLS and copy to clipboard Excel format. Once this is done, you just write down PLS control V. And here LM, click on LM, copy to Excel, take this also here, control V. Now we are not going to do any represent uh, any uh, interpretation of RMSE because errors are not normally distributed. So I will delete the errors of, for RMSE from both the, both the algorithm. I am also not going to do the use MAP. So I am also removing MAP. Now we will compare the errors which is being generated for MAE with MAE of LM and for this purpose I calculate the difference so difference is generated here let me exp uh, zoom it so that you can understand now what I'll do is I'll take the difference of this so B3 minus G3 enter now I'll drag it now the desirable thing which is expected is that this should be negative. It means that the errors in PLS should be reasonably less than that in case of LM. And if it is such, if, if this scenario exists, then in such, in such circumstances only we will go for advanced algorithm. If it is reverse, then we will say linear models are much better than PLS algorithm. You can also compare the Q square statistics of both of them and you can see the prediction which you get from, from PLS. It is much higher in comparison to LM. So we can reasonably say that the PLS algorithm is much better fitted to the model in comparison to the linear model. And that's the reason we can say that the predictive power of this model is much better than the linear model. So thank you all of you. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.